Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check fresh release from Minyard of course it is more than 135 scale and as you can see on the box art it copies FL2A2 V16 Calibri but marking um, will be featured in a Soviet version and so box art hints on this I mean you can see the Soviet star on this uh, flying thing I think it might be interesting for those who don't want to copy the um, other markings which were available before they would like to copy something unusual Soviet markings for example so this might be a perfect choice for you and this kit is already available for purchase so here we have commercial sample it means you will get exactly the same stuff as if you order it from any good model shop for example Modelimex have them for sure and we are going to open it and check what is hidden inside so just give me a second, I'll increase the frame rate so that you can see it better. Now it should be better. So, what do we have here? First of all, box size is typical, I would say. Here you can see comparison with my hand. As I said, box art is quite nice here. And then here on the side we have marking guides. So as you can see, not only Soviet aircraft is included, but also the German one. Both are finished in the green marking. And then on the other side we have some information about the kit. Well, it's written in three languages. I would say it's pretty much standard uh, info. So we are going to open this box. That's a top opening box. And here is what we have inside. So as you can see there is plenty of space and I think all the parts should arrive to you intact without any serious damage. But all frames are packed into the same plastic bag so um, well it would be better to see them packed into the separate plastic bags obviously but we have what we have so there is nothing to complain about. We are going to open it because it's a sealed plastic bag we are going to need the scissors. So here they are just give me a second to open it and I can hear that my neighbors are doing some repairs in their flat you can hear it, might hear it as well so I would like to say sorry for this straight away nevertheless here we have plastic frames as I said before and we are going to check them one by one so first of all on the top we have this small envelope with mini art logo and as you remember mini art uses this for the P threads so just give me a second to open it as you can see it's not such a huge element nevertheless those parts will be handy for fine detailing of your kit and just be careful while applying all this stuff because those parts are really small here you can see comparison with my hand and as you can see here we have seat belts included um, they are not painted so you are free to choose the color or maybe replicate some weathering on those parts Next we have also the small decal sheet, it is not protected by anything so and it is surprising that it arrived without any scratches nevertheless here we have all necessary symbols, swastika is divided into the separate segments we also have these dials for the instrument panels and as you remember seat belts were copied with PE parts and overall printing quality looks fine so I don't have any complaints about it of course decals come from decograph as it's written here Next we have first gray plastic sprue, this one is dedicated to various minor elements so let's zoom out a bit, here you can see them, uh, molding quality looks fine but this is a 135 scale so here you can see comparison with my fingertip, these are really small parts, be ready for this and be sure that you have some let's say special tools in order to be able to work with such small parts because uh, definitely you won't be able to apply them just with fingers and that's pretty much all here we also have thin parts those will require due care because they are easy to break we all know this um, especially with mini art plastic it is uh, I would say more or less typical feature so be careful with this I mean it's sad to admit but we still have this thing so it's better to be um, let's say aware of this thing next we have here the tail surfaces these are quite large well they were um, they had to be big in order to compensate the moment from the propeller nevertheless as you can see molding quality looks really good and if you flip it over here we have the guiding element for the um, I guess that's the tail fin also here we have the guiding pins so everything looks really nice and I don't see any possible issue note that rudder is molded as one piece form which should simplify the assembly process and make it more or less straightforward let's say next we have um, plastic sprue with fuselage halves 
So here we have slightly different situation because as you can see these fuselage hubs they're molded together with frame in the front so this frame will require careful separation otherwise you will just damage this frame and you will have to repair it somehow and it's not such a pleasant procedure I would say. The same can be said about this structure and here we have various outer panels which feature recess panel lines, riveting and other stuff which should look nice. Okay, next we have the uh, plastic sprue with more of various frames. I'm not sure where those go, but they look as nice as previous parts. Thank you for the first like, by the way. And next we have one, two, so two identical plastic frames. Those are dedicated to various external elements. For example, here we have engine parts, landing gear wheels, also propeller blades, and those are quite large propeller blades which features some sagging as you can see they are slightly bent which should look nice on the finished model and I think you'll appreciate it and again molding quality is on the same level as on the previous part so there is nothing to complain about next we have another plastic sprue this one is dedicated to the lower panel of the fuselage or let's say the floor of the fuselage or belly of the fuselage Engine parts are here, instrument panel, various thin control parts and other things. Again, molding quality looks good, but thin parts might be dangerous to work with, especially those ones which have the uh, connection points in the middle. So keep it in mind and be sure to you know, use the plastic saw because definitely the plastic cutters will just damage these parts and you will be um, having the funny time with those parts. Here we have last grey plastic sprue, this one is dedicated to relatively big parts and here we have various cowlings, also fuel tanks, here we have the pilot seat back side. Again uh, everything looks fine, if you flip it over here you can see that some parts have guiding elements for easier alignment, so I don't think you will have any problems while assembling all this stuff together. But um, again you will have to be careful while combining them. And last but not the least is this thing, so that's assembly manual obviously, let's zoom out a bit. Now you should be able to see it. So here we have a small list of the features, as you remember Miniart removed the parts count from this uh, section, so we don't know how many parts inside. Nevertheless, when we flip it over here we have first marking option which comes from Germany 1944-1945. And next we have parts map with colors chart here, then we flip over the page and here assembly process starts with tail section and then we continue with frontal section, engine assembly, then we install all the parts on the engine armor wall or firewall, here we assemble the main um, gear which is used to uh, transition the engine moment to the propeller as far as I understand, here we have various guiding levers or controlling levers and that's the funny part you have to assemble whole nose section out of separate frames so be ready for this and make sure you have the right alignment uh, while combining all those thin parts together um, it's not such a quick procedure I can say it straight away so be ready for such thing here we continue with various panels which will be installed on the um, on the fuselage and next we continue with P parts here, landing gear wheels here, then we assemble the propeller and as you can see propeller is assembled together with uh, the middle bar which will be actually holding those large uh, propeller blades in place. Be ready for this stuff, maybe try to strengthen the part or strengthen the connection with something um, effective, maybe some strong glue because otherwise it might be a bit um, tedious work to get everything in the right place. Here we install the seat belts, then we install various dials on this side instrument panel. Here we have another marking option, this one comes from USSR 1948. Here we have also three other kits um, which were released as a part of aircraft series from Miniard. All three are molded in 135 scale. And on the last page we have three more, so all those were reviewed on our YouTube channel, you can find them and check them closer. As for today's kit, it is a nice, let's say, um, development of the Calibri uh, kit lineup from Miniart in 135 scale. In my opinion, it might be interesting for those who would like to assemble this aircraft um, 
and did not buy the previous releases. Of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button because it will help us greatly. And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Bye.